Love doesn't rejoice in evil. Love does not rejoice in evil. What does that mean? That means that love doesn't take pleasure when things go wrong. Love, if you are, you know, we are all created in the image of God. And what is God? God is love. So we are created to function by love. So if the Bible tells us that love doesn't rejoice in evil, it means that God does not rejoice in evil. So God does not take pleasure when things go wrong or things go bad. God does not take pleasure in the fact that people, you know, think evil things or bad things happen to people. So if that is who God is, being love, and we are supposed to be in his image, it means we must act like him. We must behave like him. If he doesn't rejoice in evil, we shouldn't be rejoicing in evil. It doesn't matter who the evil uh, happens to. It doesn't matter uh, who experiences the evil. It doesn't matter mm, who is hurt in the process. It doesn't matter who is damaged in the process. Even if it's our, especially when it's our enemy. But you know, what happens in real life is that people actually don't just rejoice about the evil that happens to their relatives and their family members, I mean, or even their enemies, but we actually sometimes pray that the evil will happen to our enemies. That's totally against love, which means it's totally against God. That is against God's nature. So each time you see bad things happening and you begin to say, oh yeah, that's what he deserves. That should happen to him. You are not being like God that particular time. You are not being God-like. You are not exercising love. And the nature of God is love. So you are not being like God. If you will be happy when things go wrong for people you don't like. Or people who have done evil to you before. The fact that people have hurt your feeling in the past. The past that they have done evil to you. The fact that they have done or they had wished you evil things before. That doesn't mean that we have the right to begin to wish them evil as well. Because when you begin to wish them evil, it, it now becomes your responsibility. You see, when somebody is wishing you evil, he is putting himself in a place of danger. Because the Bible says, bless, only bless, do not curse. Bless, only bless, do not curse. So if anybody is cursing you, he is the one putting himself in danger. If anybody is laughing at your misfortune, he himself is putting himself in danger. The Bible says you don't do it. Once you don't do it, you are in a safe zone. You see, why is it that God says, bless only and never curse? That's because curses or cursing is putting you in a different camp. The camp where evil happens. So once you are a Christian, you belong to the camp of God, the camp of love. But in the camp of love, in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, we don't do evil. Evil, There is no evil in God. There is no evil in the camp or in the zone of God. So evil doesn't happen there. So for you to do evil, being a child of God, you have to step out of the kingdom. You are stepping out of your zone. You are stepping out of the kingdom of God. And stepping into the kingdom of evil where evil operates. So once you begin to wish somebody evil, you step out of your protection. Because your protection is only in your zone. In the zone of God. Once, because God is love. So he said, bless only. Only bless, never curse. So it means when you are in that position, you are under the canopy of God. That is on your, under the zone or the protection of God himself. But once you begin to uh, use the instrument of Satan, that instrument of evil or retaliation or rejoicing at the evil that happens to your enemy, that all belongs to another camp, another zone. So in that, so when you want to curse your enemy, or you want to wish them evil, or when you want to rejoice at the calamity that happens to them, what you are doing is that you are withdrawing your protection. You are withdrawing yourself from under your protection, under God's canopy, or under God's protection, and you are stepping 
into a place where God is not responsible anymore. You are putting yourself in the zone, in the camp, where God's protection is not operational. And you begin to apply and you begin to curse, curse, attract curse. So each time you curse, you are also attract, you have gone into another zone, into another territory where curse can now affect you. Because by cursing, you invite curse back to you. So if anybody will curse you, even without anybody cursing you, you are already made yourself vulnerable. So those things that God said we shouldn't do is for our own good. So when God said, when Jesus, for example, said, love your enemies. Why? Because love belongs to the zone where you are protected. But once you, he said you have heard that hate your enemies, tooth for tooth, eye for an eye, but I say to you, don't do that. Why? Because God is, Jesus knows life. He knows the laws and principles of life. He's the author of life. He said, I say to you, don't do that. Love your enemies. Why? Because once you begin to retaliate, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, it means you make yourself vulnerable. You step out of the zone of protection. You step out of God's zone. And you open up yourself for other attacks coming your way. So that's why we, you know, for example, God also said, if anybody hates you, don't hate them back. If anybody hates you, do them good. Why? Because doing good is still belongs in that zone where God's protection is. The zone of love. So as long as you are responding with the right kingdom uh, mechanisms and kingdom tools and kingdom weapons, love, kindness, doing good, praying, then you are, you know, you are establishing yourself more solidly under God's protection and you are never going to be affected because you don't step out. But once you begin to also do evil back, once you begin to hate back, once you begin to, you know, uh, do eye for an eye, then you step out of God's protection and you become vulnerable and evil will begin to come to you. So the reason why God says love doesn't rejoice in evil and we shouldn't rejoice in evil even if that evil is happening to the people we hate or who had wished us evil, the fact that that person had wished me evil or had rejoiced at my own time of bad things, when bad things happen to me or he's praying for my evil or he wants to kill me, that shouldn't instigate me to come to step out of my protection. It's just like you are in a house where you are fortified, where there is fortress, there is, you know, bulletproof, bulletproof house. And then somebody begins to shoot to your house that is bulletproof and begin to shoot, provoking you to come out. It will be nonsense. It will be unwise for you to step out of your bulletproof house into the open air where there is no protection because the person who is shooting at you the fact that he's shooting at you that's his own problem you know that you are in a bulletproof place and you are protected but if you get angry and you get emotional and you say oh i'm going to also shoot at him and you step out of your bulletproof house all the shooting that he's doing begin to affect you so that's why it's the fact that the person had wished you evil or the person had cursed you or is cursing you, whatsoever the other person is doing doesn't matter. It doesn't warrant you to begin to act out of God's command. Because the fact that he is cursing you is his own responsibility. He is the one opening himself up for Satan's attack. He is the one opening himself up. But once you begin to do the same thing, you also begin to open yourself up. So anybody that is cursing you, the person is exposing himself. Anybody that is rejoicing at your evil, the person is the one exposing himself. But the most important thing for yourself, don't expose yourself. Don't step out of God's zone of protection, where God's protection is still operational. So, Love doesn't rejoice in evil. It doesn't matter if it is your enemy or your, your even the person that is killed you or done evil to you that the evil has to happen to. 
Even if it is God that is bringing the judgment against the person, still don't rejoice. Don't rejoice. Just If we cannot pray for the person, just keep quiet. But love doesn't rejoice. Because once you begin to rejoice, you step out of love. And what is love? Love is God. God is love. Once you step out of love, you step out of God. Then who will protect you when you have stepped out of God? But when you love, when you stay in God, you stay in, you know, when you stay in love, you stay in God. And the more love you exercise, the more, you know, the more you get to know the nature of God and understand God. I want us to have a video that might help us to illustrate um, what I'm trying to, you know, explain to you today. Maybe this will help you a little bit. Let's see the video and then we'll go from there. Okay? Okay, here we go. Hallelujah. Your name and testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Spirit. My testimony is on victory. Last year, September, I lost my younger sister. So I went to Abuja to bury her because she had a fatal accident. So that made me stay in Abuja for like three weeks. After burying her myself, when I came back, lo and behold, a married lady coming under the level to come and console us has taken over my marriage. When I came, I saw her. So I told her that immediately I saw her. She asked, I told her, this marriage is caught. Oh. You can't just come in like this and even enter my house. So I prayed them and scattered them. When I scattered her, I also scattered her own home. I told her, your husband would leave and her husband ran away. That did not end. So she told me that because of what I have done, she gave me a date, 20th, which is my birthday of January, that I will pick in Portacot City, I will run mad, and gave me on the 14th that she will send me crossing bell, which is my marriage anniversary, that is this month. Lo and behold, after the declaration on Sunday, when I was just passing on Tuesday, a lady, her sister called me and said, Priya, what did you do to hope? I said nothing. He said, now nah, hope is mad, that they have gone to her back to the <laughs> Hallelujah. All oh, that sick and someone will go down in this service. Stand your feet and appreciate God. <laughs> These are the witchcraft churches we have in Africa. Witchcraft, witchcraft churches. This one are witchcraft, don't be church. Oh. This one is witchcraft. This is witchcraft churches, not church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's start that story all over again. Okay? I'm going to analyze. I want you people to write to me. Write right now. I want you to write in the comment section what is wrong with that testimony. What is wrong with that testimony? Is everything okay? What is wrong with that testimony? What was the problem? Or do you people want to come and share? I don't want to be want to try. Waiting wrong there. Okay. If you let me then do it myself. Let's go again. I'm going to analyze to you what is the what are the things that are wrong there. Your name and testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Spirit. My testimony is on victory. Stop. Last year, such a beautiful name, eh? purity. Mm -hmm. But the teaching they, they are giving us not as we erase the purity. Instead of purity, now what we are having is vengeance, anger. Okay. My testimony is on victory. Last year, September, I lost my younger sister, so I went to Abuja to bury her. She is a believer, a member of this church. I am 19% sure. Almost 99. Since I know that once you are a believer in Nigeria, you are a Christian. It means you are from Christian, but it means the sister also was a Christian. Who she lost. Now, why do people die young sometimes? Why is it that we lose people? This is not our older sister that died, but our younger sister. But she died in an accident. Now, of course, accident might be a reason for it. But from what we discussed yesterday and from what we have been discussing all this week, you people should be able to tell me now what are the, why sometimes do we lose people? Why do people die? There are different reasons, right, that I've given to you this. Let me give you another reason why people will die, why young people will die, why we lose people sometimes. Okay, so in this case, with this kind of testimony that she is giving, saying that somebody came to take her husband 
And so she also, this lady also went and prayed a kind of certain prayer and scattered the family of that other person. What is that? That is retaliation. Exactly the thing that God said you shouldn't do. Don't repay evil for evil. Now, what from which from the teaching I've done earlier before this video, who will tell me? Who can tell me what law has she violated? What what has she done that could lead to her death? I think you English speakers by after help me, oh. girls. You don't want to do what you did yesterday. What is the because this might be the same mindset that a sister who died also has. A sister who died might be having the same mentality, which which is the mentality that most people in Nigeria have. That when anything anybody comes against you, you must retaliate. Basically, you must repay evil for evil. So I can understand why people die sometimes. Not just that only reason. If I hear a few things or how they live their life, I can diagnose. I can say why people are sick. I can say why people die. I can explain to you why calamities happen in people's lives. Because with the death of the sister, she has not learned anything. She has not learned anything. And the path she is walking now, that this particular church is leading her to walk in, is a dangerous path. That Because she said she came from church, from a declaration that was made in the church. So there are some things being made in the church, some declarations being made, that for it was from that declaration of, that made the other woman run mad. And she's coming to church to give testimony. And the whole church is applauding, rejoicing, and shouting that uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, opponent, or a rival, the rival lady she has in her life, ran mad. And you know what a typical Nigerian man will tell you? A typical Nigerian Christian will tell you? Oh, yeah, that's a good thing she did. Our church is more powerful than... And I'm sure that the woman that took her husband and that ran mad, she's a Christian too, I'm very sure. Nigeria, all of them are Christians. So, if that woman is a Christian too, they will now say, the reason why she came to church to testify, and the reason why all these who are giving her the microphone is that they want to affirm that their own church, eh? Is the church where they will pray that you Roma, you are the Roman. But her own church, the other woman's church, she also threatened her that she will run mad, but she never ran mad because her church is more powerful. And rather, that other one is the one that ran mad, so her church is not as powerful. My church is the one that's powerful. My man of God is the one that's powerful. And you know what the typical Nigerian person will still tell you? They will say, well, what do you expect, pastor? What do you want? You want them to make them kill her? You want them to kill her. Because the woman would have wanted to kill her and the woman wanted her to run back. The woman wanted to take her family. So you just want her to be looking and wanting to kill her. Well, and so they will now say it is justified what she did. That she made the woman run mad and she scattered her own family. That that is justified. But I am telling you that it's not justified because if you know the laws of nature, you will discover that it's not justified. If you know the Bible, if you know God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you will know that it's not justified and it's not right. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you will know that that is not right. That is a, not that's not the, the right Christian. That's not Christian. It's not Christianity at all. So, but this same mentality is what is making all Nigerian Christians now you know, mad and calling for blood and vengeance against the headsmen. Because in their mind, once the headsmen have killed us, it means we have the right now to for vengeance. We have the right for 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 to be angry. We have the right to be uh you no know, vindictive. We have the right to retaliate. We have the right to pay evil for evil. Because they are doing evil against us, we have right for evil. But the Bible says that do not revenge for yourself. Do not avenge for yourself. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who abuse you. So we think that we are justified. We think we have an excuse. We have, we have an argument. What is the argument? Well, it did evil to me. Well, he did evil against me. Well, he wished, he wished to do evil against me. Well, she wanted to make me die. Well, she wanted me to lose my family. So because she has done evil against me, now I am justified to also wish her evil. 
But what, remember the example that I gave you earlier on, that when you are in a fortified home or house and somebody is shooting into that house with a gun, you, are, you don't have anything to be bothered about apart from the noise of the gun. Why? Because you are in a fortified, bulletproof house. But the thing that the person who is shooting is doing is to provoke you to come out of your fortified, bulletproof house. Because the person who is shooting wants you to get angry and get irritated and step out into the street, into the open air. And once you step out into the open air, you make yourself vulnerable because you have just come out of the fortified and bulletproof house. That is what Jesus is trying to tell us, that somebody slap you in, instead of stepping out of that fortified house, better give him the second one. Don't, but don't step out. Don't let anything make you step out of that fortified house you are. Because it's a different zone. You know, so loving... Uh, being kind, doing good to the people who hate you, never cursing but just blessing, those things make you to remain in your bulletproof house. But once you begin to respond and to react emotionally and to revenge and to pay evil for evil, you remember it is evil for evil. Evil for evil. You step out from the zone of love, from the territory of protection, for you step out from God's protection, from God's bulletproof fortified house, you step out into the open air. Evil for evil. There, everything is just evil for evil, evil for evil. And that is exactly what we are witnessing here. This lady paying evil for evil that the other person did for her. But what God is trying to tell us that the only force that can destroy evil is good. Let him shoot, 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 shoot against you in your home for the fight house. By the time he, there is no response, God himself is stepping in for you. And then the person himself is getting tired. Just live your own life. The only thing that can destroy evil is good. The only force that can stop evil is love. So he says, stay in love. That is your own way to victory. But in this case, this woman just lost her sister and she thinks she's, I mean, and then somebody came, maybe who is a friend, maybe it's, 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 it's somebody, it's, you know, but somebody she knows came because she said the person is married. So if somebody she knows came to take a husband, but that is a silly story that you hear in Africa. Somebody come to take your husband. Is your husband a five-year-old kid? Is your husband a, a, a mumu? Is your husband a, a goat? Is he a biomass? Is he without will? You better say the opposite. It is, it is men that approach women. Married women don't just step out from their house to come and be looking for your own husband. It is men that look. It is men that, you know, sash. It is men that, that look for girls, that men. If your man doesn't have interest, how will, he, how will the woman just come and take your wife, husband away as if your husband doesn't have any wish? The fact that the person took your husband away is not just the problem of the person who took your husband away. It's the problem of yourself. Your own relationship with your husband. And it's the problem of your husband. Because the fact that your husband followed another married woman is not just the fact that he, met, he followed physically and went to sleep with the woman. It's what has happened in his heart. It is what's going on in his heart. His heart is not here with you. If his heart is with you, he will not leave you and go to the other person. That's what you should be bothered about. What is the, what is the good in, it, in, that, in you returning him when his heart is not here and his heart is in another place? So, but, but because of the teaching that, you know, and the culture that we are coming from, uh, the women always put blame on the woman. They always put the blame on the weaker vessel. Anyway, so this woman here, she's making a mistake. Let's start with the, let me start the story all over again, please. Let's, let's start with that story all over again. I want you to hear it again, and I will uh, tell you, you know, what are the issues here. Yeah, go ahead. Your name and testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Spirit. My testimony is on victory. Last year, September, Stop. I lost him. Did you hear just say a testimony is on victory? But she doesn't know that, yes, she thinks she has recorded victory by making the other woman run down, run mad. But she has exposed herself. She has come out of under her covering, under her bulletproof house. 
She had just come out into an open zone where evil reigned. That's why the Bible says that do not pay evil for evil. Do not. Once you begin to pay evil for evil, you come out into the open zone where you go into the territory of evil. That's number one. Number two, the Bible says that, you know, uh, bless only. Only bless, never curse. Do not ever curse. Only bless. Because once you begin to curse, you step into the territory of evil. But as long as you are blessing, as long as you are blessing, you are fortified. So the only reason why that woman could come and inflict evil on you is because of this mindset. Once you begin to think about paying people evil for evil, it means that you have conceived evil in your heart. You have given room for evil in your life. And as a man thinketh, so he is. If you are capable of thinking evil, whatever you think is what you do. Whatever you think is what you become. Whatever you think is what you attract. You begin to attract the evil also. So the fact that your hus the, hus the husband, somebody came to claim your husband, is part of the evil thought that you have, you, have, you have accommodated evil. And so you have opened your door, the door of your life, for evil. Your sister just died, that is evil. Your husband was taken, that is evil. Why do evil come at us? It's because we have opened the door by thinking evil. As a man thinketh, so he is. You begin to think. That's why God said, they are cursing you, bless only. Only bless. Why? So that you don't entertain evil. Don't open the door for evil. Once you begin to entertain evil, it, you, you know, you begin to think about evil. You begin to plan evil. Do it. You know, even without doing evil, you begin to attract evil. Because what you think is what attracts things that you think about. That's why God said, only bless. We let them be cursing you, but you'll be blessing. Bless only, never curse. And never retaliate evil for evil. Never repay evil for evil. Why? Because once you begin to repay evil, it means you have already started talking, thinking about it. You begin to attract evil. As you think, as a man thinketh, so he is. So this lady, she's having from one problem to the other. She thinks she has won. Victory. Victory, you lost your sister, is that victory? And you don't know that something is wrong because you could accommodate evil. You have accommodated the possibility of evil. Now that your sister, your husband is being taken from you, it is also evil that you want to use to fight. But the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. The weapon of warfare is, first of all, love, kindness. Do good that God said you should do, first of all. But when you can, you are even entertaining the thought. That by cursing back, or by destroying another family, or by making another person go mad, you, that you can use evil to win, you have already lost. Once you begin to think that you can use evil to win, you have already lost. The only instrument, the only thing that can overcome evil is good. Overcome evil with good, the Bible says. Or with love. So, let's continue with this testimony here my younger sister so i went to abuja to bury her because she had a fatal accident so that made me to stay in abuja for like three weeks after burying her myself when i came back lo and behold a married lady coming under the level to come and console us has taken over my marriage when i came i saw her so i told her that immediately i saw her she has, I told her this marriage is caught. Oh. You can't just come in like this and even enter in my house. So I prayed them and scattered them. When I scattered her, I also scattered her own home. I told her your husband would leave and her husband ran away. That did not end. So stop, she told me that stop. because. You see, this is using evil. The evil that was done against you, you are now stepping out of your own fortified, fortified zone, of your own protected zone, of your own bulletproof zone, you are now stepping out into the territory of evil. That's exactly what Satan wanted. That's exactly what Satan wanted. That's why he was provoking you. That's exactly what Satan wanted. That's why he was slapping you. That's why he was shooting at you. He wants you to step out of your protection into his own territory where you will be now vulnerable. And that's what the black lady has just done. She has just made herself vulnerable. She has stepped out to the territory of the enemy. 
Somebody say we should share the message. Please go and share the video, please. If you have not yet shared the video, go share the video. Tag people, tag your friends. Let's continue, please. It did not end. So she told me that because of what I have done, she gave me the 20th, which is so, my birthday. This other lady, which I'm sure is also a Christian, you see the way they are trading. They are trading in evil. That one is do I did this one to you, you are going to do this one to me. I give you this date, you gave me that day. You know, Christians, they are trading in evil. That is why evil will never stop in their lives and in their in their in their territory. The Bible says he that draws a sword, that the sword will never cease in his home. It is the same thing with evil. Once you begin to use evil as a weapon, evil never departs from you or from your home or from your territory. It is not our territory. It is not our, you know, our means of functioning at all. Don't resolve to evil. Go ahead. Of January that I will pick in Buttercourt City. I will run mad. And gave me on the 14th that she will send me crossing bell, which is my marriage anniversary. That is this month. Lo and behold, after the declaration on Sunday, when I was just passing on Tuesday, a lady, her sister called me and said, Priya, what did you do to hope? I said nothing. He said, now nah, hope is mad that they have bumped her back to the house. Hallelujah. Oh, that she can see the shout. Hear the shout. He had the rejoicing that somebody ran mad. Can you hear the shout? Let's, let's hear the shout. Can you hear the shout and the rejoicing? Even the pastor that is in charge is he is hailing. Yes, let's shout, let's rejoice. Our church is powerful. We stop now at the talk. Our church is powerful. Do you know, after the declaration that she made and their pastor made on Sunday, now the lady will run mad and they are rejoicing at that. And everybody is rejoicing. Yes, our church is the most powerful. The lady ran mad, yes. But not knowing that that is inviting even more evil. Both to her life and to the life of her family. Can you hear it? Oh, that sick and someone will go down in this time. Stand your feet and appreciate God for the testimonies. See the shout. See the shout screaming. Because somebody ran mad. That is the kind of idol worshipping that is going on in that in Nigerian church. That is evil spirit. That is all paganism. That is syncretism. That is not Christianity at all. That is not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. That is a house of evil. Even if it is true that God had a prayer, and I don't think God had a prayer. But even if it is true, but you don't rejoice, that is the topic of today. Love doesn't rejoice in evil. So evil was done. Somebody ran mad and the whole church is rejoicing. So by that testimony, that woman is bringing evil into the life of all church members that are rejoicing like that. Once you begin to rejoice because of those kind of testimonies, you begin to invite evil to your own life too. So that woman that is just testified now has infected the whole church. All the people shouting and screaming. If she had just infected them with evil. So all of them will begin to experience some crisis or the other. Why? Because the Bible says, the Bible says that love does not delight in evil. Once you begin to delight in evil, you step out of love. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 6. So once love does not rejoice in evil, and you are protected under the, under the covering of love. Once you begin to do the opposite of love, you are no more in love. You step out of love, and you begin to rejoice in evil, you become exposed to evil. The protect, you step out of the protection of love. So all those people who are rejoicing in that church now, they now put themselves under the danger, they now put themselves under the danger of evil. And when they go to church on Monday, things will begin to go wrong. When they go, go to their family, things will be going to go wrong. Why? They have stepped by rejoicing about evil that is happening. They have just stepped out of love. And by stepping out of love, they step out of the bulletproof house. And they are now exposing themselves to that same evil that they are rejoicing about. Because God is love. 
Once you abide in love, by the principles of love, you abide in God. God is love. God washes over himself. His own. God, you are, you are in love, you are in protection. Once you are in love, you are in God. You cannot, for somebody to get you, you have to penetrate God. But once you step out of love, you step out of God's zone, out of God's protection. You don't get to know God anymore because you are moving the opposite of God. You don't get to understand God because you are doing the opposite. You are stepping out of him, going like a prodigal son. But then you expose yourself to all kinds of attacks. So love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love doesn't rejoice in evil. Love doesn't rejoice in evil. So love does not rejoice in evil, but rejoice in the truth. That means anything that is negative, anything that is evil, anything that is bad, it doesn't matter who, to whom it's happening, don't join them to rejoice. So make you not join them. Love does not rejoice at injustice. Love does not rejoice, but rejoices at the truth. Love, love, love will, will not rejoice at any kind of injustice, evil, anything happening bad. Love will not rejoice. Many people would rather rejoice when things are going wrong with others. But that way, they expose themselves. But this is not the part of love. Love doesn't rejoice. Love doesn't rejoice in evil. And when those people begin to have problems, we'll be wondering, ah, why is he having this problem? Now he's a Christian now. Because he has stepped into the territory of problems, of, of, of evil. Remember the quotation we normally read every day? All problems, all problems in the world are love problems. Either loving yourself too much or not loving others as yourself. So it means that once you begin to rejoice at evil or at the wrong thing that happened, it's a love problem. It means you love evil. Instead of loving people, even if evil is happening to somebody, you should have compassion. Love will not rejoice that somebody is dying, somebody is going mad. So that's a love problem. You are loving the wrong thing. You are loving evil. You are rejoicing at evil even if you love evil. So all problems in the world is a love problem. Either not loving yourself, and that also means you don't love somebody that is in crisis, someone that is going through issues, someone that is having problems. The person that went wrong mad, if you have loved for the person, you will not rejoice. So it is not just evil coming to the life of that particular woman, but it's evil coming to the life of all the people shouting and you know rejoicing in the church. Either loving yourself too much. And why are those people clapping in the church? Because they love themselves too much. They think that that kind of miracle will happen to them too. Now that in their church people are running mad once they want to take their husband, now you know that, okay, if anybody wants to take my own husband too, he will run mad. It, that's what happens in my church. You love yourself too much. That's why you are now rejoicing at evil. So, so all problem in the world is a love problem. Either we love ourselves too much or we don't love others as ourselves. If we love others as ourselves, we will not be rejoicing that the woman ran man. A misdirected love is loving the wrong things. All this kind of testimony, when you love those things, you love the wrong thing. Or loving self. And that's what's making you to rejoice that another person went mad. And other things. When you love things or self, it's loving the wrong things. Instead of loving God and loving people. So, all those people who are clapping there, rejoicing that evil has happened, when evil begins to happen to them, it's also because they don't love their neighbor as themselves. It's all because they love themselves too much. It's all because they, you know, they love evil. They invited evil by themselves. So, love does not delight in evil, no matter who the evil is happening to. But love will take advantage of rejoicing when things are going on right. Love rejoices in truth. Love rejoices when things are done in truth. So love will not rejoice at injustice, but rejoice at the truth. I'm going to do another video now. Many people would rather rejoice when things are going wrong with others, but this is not the path of love. To step out of that path of love is to step into danger. 
When you step out of love, you step out of your protection. You step out of your zone. You step out of your covering. God is your covering when you live in love. But when you, when you abide in love, you abide in God. But when you step out of love, you are, uh, step out of God. You, 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 know, you, 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 you lose your protection. But in Africa, in Africa, we need to make sure that this teaching, you know, is propagated in Africa because uh, the pastors in Africa, they have messed up Christianity. They have messed up the mind of Christians. And Christians are just doing the opposite of what the, what the Word of God says. Okay, let's go ahead and see another video here. Hello. Let's take this written testimony. Vomited a live fish and a padlock through the mystery of the anointing oil. <laughs> I am a new convert nice. and on Sunday, June 21, 2015, I attended service for the first time in Canaan land. During the service, I took a shot of the anointing oil as instructed by Bishop Oyedebo. At 4 a.m. the following day, I had stomach ache and went to the toilet. There, I vomited a live fish and two padlocks. Surprisingly, an uncle who did not know where I lived before then knocked at the door at 5 a.m., came in and packed the items I vomited. Then he criticized me for being born again. The following day, I took another shot of the anointing oil. Thereafter, I received a call from Bene Republic that one of the four daughters of that my uncle had died. I was also told that the other three daughters confessed that they were responsible for my afflictions. Presently, one of them is paralyzed. I give God all the glory. <laughs> from Daniel Victor, you will be the next to testify. <laughs> First of June, whoa, whoa, whoa. in the anointing service, and had a shot of the oil, and has been undergoing some severe affliction over the years. There was excreted a live fish and two padlocks. Immediately, the bands were loosed. And in the morning, the agent of the devil, 5 a.m., came down to collect the items and collected the afflictions. And the death that was appointed to die, the daughter died that day. Therefore, in this anointing service, every arrow of the wicked sent in your direction returns back to the sender. And the remaining three daughters, one of them got paralyzed. All that they meant for him went to them. Therefore, today, in this anointed service, everyone who may have held your life down in one way or another, anyone who may have been molesting your destiny in one way or another, the arrow returns back to their head. Okay, let's go, let's go back. Let's go back. I think I think this is just ridiculous. Can you people now believe that this is absolute nonsense, rubbish? And this is, the, I mean, this is another confirmation that we don't have churches in Africa. These places are not churches. These are shrines. These are not churches. These are shrines. Okay, let's start all over again. Let's start all over again. Let's analyze this whole thing. Let's take this written testimony. Written. Vomited a live fish. Stop, and stop, 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 stop. Vomited a... It's a pity nobody wants to call, help me to the comment, though. Because vomited a live fish. Even if the fish... He swallowed the fish, or either by accident, or, or by miraculous. What kept the fish? You know the way... Who is a medical doctor here? You know the way uh, digestive system works? There is no way a live fish will survive under the acid. You know there is gas. There is gas and acid in the stomach that does not allow, that will not allow any li li live thing to survive. The acid itself, the heat itself is enough to boil and kill any 
as any living thing. You know, who, who, is, who has brainwashed our people? Who is telling this rubbish? And people are believing it. Thousands of people there are shouting. Thousands of people are rejoicing that this is a true story. This is nonsense story. This is for stupid people. It is for ignorant people. It is for, it is for people who are not, who, who don't have an idea what, how they, you know, people who are just ignorant. Huh? People who are just totally ignorant. Life, vomited life fish. How long has the life fish there? They will tell you that the life fish has been there since all his problems. That's why he didn't have all the problems. I will still get to the padlock, but let's talk about the live fish first. The live fish, I mean, oh my, no, 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 no. I don't, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, guys, you know, I'm sorry that this is happening in my own country. And in the so-called Christian church. This is happening in the so-called Christian church. I mean, even if you want to lie, make you lie no more. If you want to even deceive people, if you want to tell lies, tell lies that people can believe that is believable. Telling lies that are off the table, off the mark, that will make people don't know that you are totally, you've lost it. This is not a church. We don't have churches in that nation anymore. These are shrines. These are glorified shrines. Okay, here we go. Fish and a padlock through the mystery of the anointing oil. Is it a padlock or two padlocks? Now it was a padlock, and then it will become two. Or make you listen. It's the padlock right now. Padlock. You know, if you have a padlock in your stomach, the is you the stomach pain will not begin that night after he got home with the after he took the shot, in whatever shot he took, anointing oil shot. Then he started feeling, if he had having, if he was having padlock in that stomach, he would be feeling the pain consistently every day, every minute. He would, he would, not, be, he would not be walking about with two padlock in his stomach. And it, because that is a strange object. It is, a, it is iron. Padlocks are iron. Metal. If you have metal like that in your stomach, I mean, it will be, it is it's antibody. It's called antibody. It would have been affecting you. It would have been giving some effects. I mean, you will not be able to just stand it. You would have needed to go to the hospital a long time before now. Okay, here we go. Fly fish and a padlock through the mystery of the anointing oil. And so, the new what is the mystery of the anointing oil? All this rubbish brainwashing. It would have just deceived people, brainwashed them, telling them about mystery of anointing oil. Not be for the well, that anointing or not be for the banker that they sell them. That anointing or did it come from heaven or somebody bought it from the shop? So if it is a mystery, something who then the man or the woman who prepared the who did the oil, who you know who extract the oil might be more mysterious. That is the whole mystery now. The one who prepared the oil, the one who extracted it is the real mystery. Rubbish. Okay, let's go. Convert. And on Sunday, June 21, 2015, I attended service for the first time in Canaan land. During the service, I took a shot of the anointing oil as instructed by Bishop Oyedebo. Stop. I this person that I'm, I'm attended your church for the first time, why don't you try him out? You don't even present him. I can't even see the person. You are reading his he's written. How do you know that somebody didn't just cook up a story? What is the confirmation? How do you know that that person will exist? Anybody can just cook up a story and send it to you and you just accept that it is true like that? And you are using it for the whole wide world to base a whole theology on it? No, 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 no. Wake up, guys. At 4 a.m. the following day, I had stomach ache. And went to the toilet. There, I vomited a live fish and two padlocks. Two. Stop. So, you, you see, I told you it's now two. It was one before. Now it's now two. And Bishop was sitting down there listening. And he didn't tell them to take it off and it's rubbish. He's coming to affirm it. 
Because these people are all about affirming their own superiority and, and greatness. It was, it was a padlock that he vomited. Now he's there too. And a live fish is living. Bring him now. He said, no, no, you cannot bring it because somebody went and came and packed it away. Okay, go ahead. Surprisingly, an uncle who did not know where I lived before then knocked at the door at 5 a.m. Came in and packed the items I vomited. Then he criticized me for being born again. The following day, I took another shot of the oh. anointing of... A shot of the anointing. What kind of language is that? Is it an injection? Another shot. I took another shot. Is it injection? Injection. Anyway, first of all, that doesn't make sense. If you took the, if you vomited the thing that is it at two? What time? At five? What time did you? Let's hear the story. When did he vomit the thing? Let me see. In two padlocks, so to the toilet. There, <laughs> a.m. the following day, whoa, whoa, I had what? stomach ache. As instructed by Bishop Oyedebo, mm -hmm. at 4 a.m. the following day, I had stomach ache and went to the toilet. There, I vomited a live fish and two padlocks. Okay, stop. Surprisingly. Which, which means that the, he had the stomach ache at 4 a.m., which means that he probably went to the toilet and vomited at that same 4 a.m. Or maybe he didn't go to the toilet over me immediately. He had the stomach ache, which would make the time to be 4.10 or 4.20 or 4.30. <laughs> so, after the stomach ache, there's some time that has passed. So, if you forbidden, so that is one question. Second question, what kind of toilet is that? <laughs> you, you, you know they flush? <laughs> you don't flush it? You didn't flush the toilet? If you say you forbidden it in the toilet or whatever you forbidden it, the thing didn't, you, don't, you don't get rid of it? Okay. Now, the, somebody came at five. So he took the person who doesn't know where you live at all. Someone who does, you said the person doesn't know where you live. He took him one hour between the time your stomach started paining you and 5 p.m. to arrive from wherever that person was. So 4 a.m., either he drove his own car from five and maybe he was living in the neighborhood and you never he never knew you are you are you never knew also where he lives. So it took him one hour. Okay, let's assume that it took him one hour to uh, to travel from wherever he is. He opened the door and you that just vomited padlock, you were going to open for him. And the only thing that he was interested in is the toilet. <laughs> to see the padlock that and uh, the left life feet that you vomited. Is there no witness, no other person, human being in that house? Okay, here we go. There an uncle who did not know where I lived before then knocked at the door at 5 a.m., came in and packed the items I vomited. Then he criticized me for being how born did, again. How did they even know where you vomited it? And he only came, knocked at the door, and packed it. <laughs> and it is now that he's criticizing you for being born again. He couldn't do that before. Is it his own vomit or your own? Why should he pack your own vomit and you they look at him? And you open your eyes and you are seeing him look at it and take your vomit away. What kind of story is this one? And Bishop uh, Oyedepo is sitting down there and affirming this story. Not just sitting down there and being deceived, but he actually stood up to affirm the story. Have they all lost it? Okay, go ahead, please. The following day, I took another shot of the anointing. What kind of, what kind of shot are they taking? What's wrong? What kind, of, what kind of language are they coming up with this church? I took another shot. So... To for me, that don't like fish. You want to start a fishing business? No. <laughs> hey, the fishing business is the best on that show. Okay, let's go. Thereafter, I received a call from Benedict Public that one of the four daughters of that my uncle had died. 
I was also told that the other three daughters so, confessed. So he took another shot. Then, as a result of the shot, one daughter died. Then another daughter became paralyzed. And they are all rejoicing. The whole church is rejoicing. And the bishop came to say, yes, yeah, you see, we sent it back to sender. Are you in witchcraft business? Getting trophy and the fact that how many people you have been able to kill? How many destinies you have been able to send back to the sender? Okay, here we go. That they were responsible for my afflictions. Presently, one of them is paralyzed. I give God all the glory. So one died, one is paralyzed, and you give God all the glory? When God himself is saying you should love your neighbor? Okay, let's continue now. From Daniel Victor, you will be the next to testify. So, where is Daniel Victor? I can't see the Daniel Victor. You don't get picture at least. Or video. You don't get face, you don't get body. You don't get leg for him to walk, water come. Doesn't the guy have leg to come? He came before for the shot now. And he came for the second time for the second shot. Now he cannot come for the big trophy story, testimony. We don't have church again in that country. If this was you book our church, we are all in trouble. Okay, here we go. That new convert came 21st of June. See, this bishop is supposed to verify that story. You don't even need verification. The bishop is supposed to rubbish the whole testimony and kick everybody out of there. But he's coming to a farm rubbish. Okay, go, here we go. In the anointing service and had a shot of the oil. You see, he's also using the same language. undergoing some severe affliction over the years. How do you know he has been undergoing some severe affliction over the years? He didn't say that now. Okay, go ahead. There was a splitted, a live fish, and two padlocks. Immediately, the bands were loosed. And in the morning, the agent of the devil, 5 a.m., Now he's giving, the bishop is now giving the, the identity to the man. Now the man is no more the cousin or the uncle. It is now the agent of Satan. Okay. Collect the items and the, collect but, the affliction. But what is, where is even the proof that even if these things all happen, but where is the proof that that man is the agent of Satan? That that man is the one who planted uh, two padlocks in the man's stomach? That that man is the one who put the live fish in his stomach? Why is it that this live fish only live in Africa? Why is it that these live fish, they don't uh, survive in Europe here, eh? And they don't, these padlocks, they are all finding there. They don't come to Europe. They don't, only in African body, they, they come. Okay, here we go. And the death that he was appointed to die, the daughter died that death. Therefore, in this who, anointing who, service... Who, who said he was... Eh? Who said they were appointed to die? And they died. In the, now, the bishop is saying the people, the, the people died and see the kind of rejoicing in the church. People are rejoicing that people died. Let's hear. Every arrow of the wicked sent in your direction. And it turns back to the sender. Can you go back a little bit when you said they, they died and then the people began to rejoice? No, no, no. Just now. <coughs> Came down to collect the items and collected the afflictions. And the death that he was appointed to die, the daughter died that death. Therefore, in this anointing service, you see? every arrow of the wicked sent in your direction and it turns back to the sender. So, even if it is true that, even if it is true that, you know, that all happened, the fact that all these people are rejoicing, they open themselves up for evil. Because love does not, let me see the note. 
Love does not rejoice in evil. The fact that they are rejoicing, you know, they are clapping, and say, amen, and rejoicing that that man died, that woman died, and the other one is paralyzed, rejoicing in evil, they step out of the zone of protection of love. They step out of the zone of protection of God, because God is love, God is our protection. Once you begin to do opposite like that, you step out, and you expose yourself. So now, they become vulnerable. Love does not delight in evil. Once you begin to delight in evil, you step out of love. And who is love? God is love. You make yourself vulnerable. And then, once you begin to rejoice or that evil happened to other people, other people that you are rejoicing, it means you conceive evil in your mind. And as a man thinketh, so he is. You begin to think that evil can or that or actually happen to people who will hurt you. Or evil, will, you, are, you begin to invite evil and you know, um, you begin to invite evil to yourself. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. Once you begin to conceive evil concerning other person, in concerning other people, even if they are your enemies, you begin to invite evil to yourself. So love does not rejoice. That's why we don't rejoice in injustice or in evil. But rejoices are the truth. Many people would rather rejoice when things are going wrong with others. We don't do that. That is making ourselves vulnerable. But this is not the path for love. And it's not the path of Christians. Proverbs 24 and 17 also says, that even in the Old Testament, the Bible says, do not rejoice. Even in the Old Testament, though, do not rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. And do not let your heart be glad. Even if you are not rejoicing, even your heart shouldn't be glad when it stumbles. Why? Because you don't want to come under the attack. You don't want to remove yourself from God's protection. You don't want to remove yourself from the fortified zone. From the bulletproof zone. So that's why the Bible says, don't rejoice when your enemy falls. And do not let your heart be glad when it stumbles. Because that way you expose yourself. Love won't take advantage of another's misfortune. But once you begin to do that, you be a partaker of that same misfortune. You become a partaker of that same evil. Love will even show compassion. If, a, if, if an enemy is in danger, that's why it's even if your enemy is hungry and you better feed him. If he's thirsty, you better give him water. We're going to do another video. You better do the opposite. Remain. Anything that will make you to remain in the zone of love, remain there. Even if it will take you to feed. Even if it will take you to give money or to bless your enemy, you better do it just for you not to be provoked to step out of that zone of protection. Okay, let's see another video here of what is happening in this our Nigeria, uh, or Nigerian churches, what people are calling churches in Nigeria. Here we go. <laughs> Our God is an awesome wonder. Our brother here said for a very long time now, 12 years, over 12 years to be precise, this strong man in their family has said he will never go forward. He did all he can and can all he did to make sure that this our brother doesn't go forward. But the prophecy was still in the air that we are going to celebrate their obituary. He went to farm one faithful day, returned and began to shout. Last week Sunday, he began to shout. His head, his head, his head was taken off. And he died instantly. The news was not brought to him. They shielded it from him. But he got the news from somewhere. And when he like, what happened? They say, don't come here with your fire. We know you are shouting fire. Don't kill all of us. Somebody holla fire. <laughs> Give God the praise. Celebrate Jesus, somebody. <laughs> Let's welcome the choir now. You see, a church of fraud. Fraud has overtaken the church in Africa. Fraud. Fraud lands everywhere. 
Everybody is just coming up with their different fraud just to be able to win followers and to gain, you know, to gain, to gain relevance. Fraud. Everything is about fraud in these churches. Deception and fraud. Let's hear that story again, please. Our God is an awesome wonder. Our brother here said for a very long time now, 12 years, over 12 years to be precise, this strong man in their family has said he will never go forward. He did all he can and can all he did to make sure that this, our brother, doesn't go forward. But the prophecy was still in the air. That, that what? We are going to celebrate their obituary. Stop. <laughs> See the kind of Christianity people are practicing in my country. So churches are now giving obituary. Churches are now promising and their members that they are going to celebrate the obituary of their enemies or what and a suspected enemy because nobody can confirm that these were really enemies. So now churches, pastors, bishops, this one is uh, Suleiman's church, bishop, pastors are now making you come to church to give you guarantee of the dead. And that, I mean, prophesying that your enemies are going to die. So anyway, so this man, he has somebody in his family who they refer to as the strong man. So that strong man, this guy, we, we, don't, we have to just believe his word. Though. We don't know if it's true, if it's not true. That strong man, who, we, who might be innocent, by the way, this guy said, the strong man had vowed that he would never succeed, that he would never allow him to succeed. So, and this has been going on for 15 years. So, 15 years, this guy couldn't stop the strong man. And then he came to church and got the prophecy from the man of God, Suleiman, that anybody that is against you, the man of God releases their obituary. But the one that same man of God, Suleiman, released on El Rufai, is still pending. No, El Rufai is going to die. The guy is... <laughs> <laughs> El Rufai refused to die. El the prophecy, the obituary never worked for, for El Rufai. But for church members, church members are coming to give testimony. Why, we, if he really is powerful, why is it that El, El Rufai is not dying? But church members are coming to tell stories. Because that's just. So this man now believes that since that man died, he was. Because he, 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 you know, he said after he got, gave, gave God the prophecy, and he came back home, he got a report that the man, the strong man that has hindered his success, died. He was crying, my head over my head and died. And he believes that they, were, they didn't want him to know, the family didn't want him to know, because they knew he was the one who killed him. And now when he came forth, he came forward, the family was saying, don't come to us because we know you have fire. Because your fire has killed one person, we don't want your fire to kill other people. Let's hear the rest of the story. <laughs> He went to farm one faithful day, returned and began to shout. Last week Sunday, he began to shout. His head, his head, his head was taken off. And he died instantly. The news was not brought to him. They shielded it from him. But he got the news from somewhere. And when he like, what happened? They said, don't come here with your fire. We know you are shouting fire. Don't kill all of us. Somebody holla fire. You see, that guy, big, big, well, when he was bigger, just backward, okay. This guy here, he looks educated. How can an educated human being, for Christ's sake, be repeating this story? The head was blown off, or was taken, he was, was he taken off or blown off? You know, and uh, it was taken off the head. What head taken off? He died instantly. Why are you there? And the man himself, who is supposed to be the victor is standing, he's not talking. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of manipulations and uh, fraud that are going on in our so-called churches. You see, we don't have churches anymore in that country. We still have remnants, of course, I know. We still have remnants. But all these big churches that we are talking about, they are not churches. They are not churches. Is it smaller now? They are not churches. 
They are witchcraft centers. If you are going to church, they say you are going to see obituary of your enemy. Everybody is going to church to collect the obituary of their enemies. What kind of church is that one? Obit church, church where they are guaranteeing you the death of your family members. And church where your uncle or your brother, your cousin is dying and everybody is rejoicing. What kind of church is that one? That's why evil will never depart from them. Anybody that trades in evil, evil will never depart from them. And these people are trading in evil. That's why evil will never depart from... That's why You see why all the evil in Nigeria? Can you now see the reason why all the evil all over the country in Nigeria? All these evil are being generated from churches. These churches are the, are the fabric of this evil. Every pastor, every church is releasing so much dose of evil, so much dose of evil, and the members are rejoicing. That's why evil is being multiplied all over Nigeria. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. We are not generating any, pro any industrial products. We are not producing any products, any industrial thing. We know the only thing we are producing is evil in these churches. Horrible stuff. Sad. And then the people are rejoicing, they are shouting. They don't know that they are actually endangering themselves with those shouts. But love will rather show compassion for the enemy, even if that enemy is in danger. Ezekiel 33, 11 says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Even if the man is a witch or a wizard, God said, I know, I know they have pleasure. So to say God was, even in the Old Testament, God is saying he doesn't have pleasure in the death of the wicked. Not of the death of the good, though. even the wicked, God doesn't want them to die. Now for the church to be trading and bragging themselves that they are causing the death of people, when God is saying, I don't want them to die, and you are now bragging to testify and shout that we are causing them to die. <laughs> And you want to see that that is church? No. God is saying, I have no interest, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Because the wicked yesterday was I and you. We were all that wicked yesterday. We were not always as good as this. And even now, are we good? We are not. So if we should be in Nigeria now, everybody should be calling us to die. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why sh should you die, O house of Israel? God doesn't want us to die, you see. He doesn't want even the wicked to die. But Nigerian pastors, they are saying, die, die, die. And they are giving you even obituary to guarantee your death. But love will put aside anger, no matter what people have done against you. Love will put aside anger. It will put aside retaliation. And even in times of tragedy, it will not go and pay evil for evil. Because that way he's exposing himself and he's make, making himself vulnerable. Job 31, 29 said, If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, you say. Even Job, you know how much Job suffered? You know how much suffering Job went through? And he still said he would not rejoice at those who hated him. He would not rejoice. Even in the Old Testament, people understood this. Ezekiel knew this revelation. Job knew this revelation. That you don't rejoice at the destruction of your enemy. Or lifted myself up when evil found him. Even when evil happens to your enemy, you don't rejoice. And you don't celebrate that. Even in the Old Testament, the place of when Jesus is now saying, love your enemies. Because they are all saying, don't suffer the wish to live. And that's from the Old Testament. Now I'm bringing the Old Testament from them too. Injustice and iniquity doesn't excite the person of love. Evil, death, bad things happening to your enemy doesn't make you happy if you are a person of love. When an enemy falls into sin, Love would not rejoice at that, but cover him. Let's see another video here. Let's see another video that will help us uh, to, you know, drive home the same lesson that we're talking about today. Life.
lives. In April, in my dream, God proved himself in our lives. In April, in my dream, I saw Papa, he was removing something from my stomach and from my chest. I said, ah, thank God, this is the Holy Ghost operation. The Lord has done it. And so, uh, there was a, his name is Joy Olayode, and the man standing beside me is I Olayode, my husband. We want to appreciate the Lord for breaking the yoke of four years' barrenness in our lives. How many years? Four years. Four years' barrenness. I came in contact with this commission via Champions Television. That was late 2013. The more I watch, the more I want to come. I said I come in 2014, I always come and go. Then I came for the prophetic insights, 2014. And Papa just looked at me and said, I see a child, don't worry yourself. When the Lord will turn around your captivity, it will be like a dream. He spoke casually, but he, was, he came forth with power. So I left. And I decided to join this commission, 2015, that's February ending. And I came, and God proved himself in our lives. In April, in my dream, I saw Papa, he was removing something from my stomach and from my chest. I said, ah, thank God, this is the Holy Ghost operation. The Lord has done it. And so, uh, there was a judgmental service here. That 20, that's this April ending, when is this service? I was watching from my house, and Papa said, get three stones. And as he was praying, I joined in the prayer, and quickly I threw the stones like he asked us to do. So the following day, for the first time, I went to spread my clothes at the back of the compound, and we killed a very long snake. It's not up to five days, somebody died in my husband's family. And they were like, congratulations, the strong man is dead. I was like, ah, I don't really know. But that same moon, like a joke, God just turned around our captivity, just like that. And today we are two months plus. Effectivement, quand le Seigneur a tourné la captivité de Sion, nous étions comme des gens qui rêvent. What's your dream, by the way? You want to start the whole story again? Let him mention the name. Why is the boy looking as if he is he rented? <laughs> the husband. <laughs> Let's start. My name is Joy Olayode, and the man oh. standing beside me. Okay, go, 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 go. My name is Ayo Olayode. My husband. Stop. Ah, uh, your husband. <laughs> make you make the thing bigger. This husband, I don't understand. <laughs> this husband is like is you are not even related. Is he hired? How did he get here? <laughs> From his facial expression, it doesn't seem as if anything is going on for him. It's like he doesn't even agree with the testimony. I can't see any joy in his own face. Okay, let's go back for this. Okay, what is this talking about now? My name is Ayo Lyody, my husband. We want to appreciate the Lord for breaking the yoke of four years' barrenness in our lives. How many years? Four years. Four years' barrenness. I came in contact with this commission via Champions is it Everybody is rejoicing. Every Twenty. Stop. Everybody is clapping, rejoicing, but the guy is not the one. He's not the one where was happening. No clap, no joy, no even with the facial expression, no response. And is that not his child or his own joy, <laughs> or is the congregation's joy? Okay, continue. That was late 2013. The more I watch, the more I want to come. I said I come in 2014. I always come and go. Then. I came for the prophetic insights, 2014, and Papa just looked at me and he said, I see a child, don't worry yourself. When no. the Lord will turn around, you'll come. Everybody is a Papa. Papa, that's why they don't, it's because of those Papa, they don't see the heavenly Papa. Okay. A child, don't worry yourself. When the Lord will turn around, your captivity, it will be like a dream. He spoke casually, but he was, he came forth with power. So I left, and I decided to join this commission, 2015, that's February ending. And I came, and God proved himself in our lives. In April, in my dream, I saw Papa, he was removing something from my stomach and from my chest. I said, ah, thank God, this is the Holy Ghost operation. The Lord has done it. And no. so... So, you have that Papa has removed the thing from your chest and from your stomach. The Holy Ghost has done it now. So what was later still happening? 
Go ahead. <clears throat> and so, uh, there was the judgmental service here. That's so, that ju judgmental service. And that judgmental service is where they killed all the enemies, okay? Judgmental service in the church of God. Though. Okay, go ahead. Service here. That 20, that's this April ending. When is this service? I was watching from my house. And Papa said, get three stones. And as he was so, praying. How can the pastor be saying, get three stones? What kind of church is that? Why do you need stones? So the name of Jesus is no more enough. Stones? Stones. Ah, oh God. Stones now is being used in Nigerian church to get pregnant. <laughs> or to stone the enemy. Enemy, so stone enemy. Why do you then go to uh, Saudi Arabia? It is in Saudi Arabia you throw stone now at the black uh, something, at, at the enemy. Throw stone to kill the enemy. Saudi Arabia is the most appropriate something, not Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. And as he was praying, I joined in the prayer and quickly I threw the stones like he asked us to do. Yeah. So the following day, for the first time, I went to spread my clothes at the back of the compound and we killed a very long snake. Who killed it? It's not she? A very long... So anything now has to be connected with that pregnancy and that prayer and that... Uh, so anybody that kills a snake now, it is Papa's prayer or the stone that was thrown. Okay. So the following day for the first time. So, nobody, time so no more snake. Even here, they see snake. Oh, snake day every country now. Why is it that only the snake in Africa is demon possessed? Snake is it not animal? Okay. Supposed to do. So the following day, for the first time, I went to spread my clothes at the back of the compound, and we killed a very long snake. It's not up to five days. Somebody died in my husband's family, and they were like, "Congratulations, the strong man is dead." I was like, "Ah." So I don't anybody who dies now in any family is congratulations. What country? What else? What country again? As a tradition, what kind of tra evil tradition is now being celebrated? It's now being introduced to our culture. When I was growing up, any death is a tragedy. Now it is said, congratulations that people are dying. Ah, ah, she naked. What kind of people are we rearing? Are we, are we breeding? What kind of human beings? Who will be going to church to receive anointing for people to die? And when they die, you'll be going to rejoice. What kind of human beings are these? Okay, here we go. I, uh, I don't really know. But that same moon, like a joke, God just turned around our activity just like that. So, so uh, now, can you imagine the horrible thing they are spreading? Now they are connecting the death of that relative to their pregnancy. So now, anybody that wants to be pregnant, you have to go and kill somebody in your relative or your, your husband's relative. Once you make them to die, you will get pregnant. It's similar. That is how the culture of, you know, ritual, money ritual is also coming from. Because people have told stories that people become wealthy because of ritual. So people are now going to kill people, get people's head and people's parts because, than selling them. Because they're thinking if they could just do... You know, some rituals with human organs that they will be wealthy. Now it's going to be for pregnancy. You have to go and kill somebody to be pregnant. Now we have been killing people to be rich. Now it's now killing people to be pregnant or to resolve our problems. And today we are two months plus and we give God praise. So only, the hus only the husband is not giving God praise. <laughs> okay, let's go to. Uh, what kind of what is happening to the church in Africa in Nigeria what is happening when an enemy falls we should not rejoice we should rather be sad when an enemy is in need love won't rejoice for that but rather have compassion Romans 12 15 says rejoice with those who rejoice 
and weep with those who weep. But in Africa now, it's rejoicing for those who weep. You say, oh, sorry. Love doesn't rejoice in evil. By rejoicing in evil, you expose yourself to more evil. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Don't rejoice that people are feeling bad. When injustice is done to an enemy, love swings in their defense. Even if it is God that has just done the, the, the you know, you know, uh, you know, judgment to your enemy, don't don't rejoice for them. Don't begin to rejoice that they are suffering. Even when your enemy is being done injustice, you're supposed to defend them. That's what love does. Love rejoices at the truth, no matter who it comes from, and love doesn't rejoice at evil. Love is not and never biased at truth, whoever is the author of the truth. To Acts 20 35 says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. That is the spirit of Christ. Support the people who are suffering, who are vulnerable, who are weak who are mourning. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Give love. Give understanding. And this thing is not being practiced in churches in Africa. Give people support. You see, the whole thing that the church is supposed to be about is by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And I want you people to pay attention to this. By laboring, all our labor must be towards the weak. All the activities of the church must be to support the weak. But we, we are now killing the weak and rejoicing at their demise. <clears throat> yeah, I want us to see one more video. Here we go. My name is Temilola Joseph. I am here to bless the name of the Lord that for what he has done for me and still doing in my life. Um, I've been looking for the fruit of the womb close to three years until I came here last um, year, 888, for the 888 program to be precise. But I've been coming here though, but I didn't lose faith. So when I came here 888, I heard a lot of women giving testimony about fruit of the womb. And I said, God, you are going to answer mine too this year. But the devil, <laughs> as usual, doing the trick. Just, I saw my period after 888. The next month I saw my period. I didn't lose faith. I kept on praying, praying. And then I had this dream. I saw a woman. She came and said uh, she has been the one that has been getting pregnant all the while, that she has been the one swallowing my babies. So I cursed her in that dream. I cursed her and I said, because you have two children. I saw in the dream that she had two children. That you that have two children, you have decided to swallow my own babies. Now I cursed you. I sent forth measles. So I cursed her and then the next morning, I found out that the person actually was my closest friend who happens to also be my neighbor. And the Lord delivered me from her. Today I have my own baby right now. My the most beautiful baby in the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> what church is that? Mountain of fire. Hey, now is a dangerous thing to be a good, a, a close friend though, to anybody who is a Christian in Nigeria because you don't know when they will begin to pray that you will die. 